she continued. And people need to understand he didn't want that creepy blank cracker. I don't know what a cracker is. Going to his father or girlfriend's house to go get, mind you, his little brother was there. You know, now, mind you, I told you, I told Trayvon, it might have been a rapist. So now they're accusing, and th this is what they're saying. They're accusing uh, George Zimmerman of being a, um, a rapist. I got something to say about that, too. Here's another one. Baltimore Sun. Witness claims youth yelled, this is for Trayvon and beating. Baltimore police said they're investigating a witness account that a group of black youths beat a Hispanic man near Patterson Park Sunday while saying, this is for Trayvon. Witness posted the account on a community Facebook page and police confirmed that they are looking into whether the suspect's reaction to the verdict in the Florida trial of George Zimmerman played a part in the incident. A police report on the beating does not mention the alleged comments. Now, um, here are some things that I'm going to I'm going to try to tie. So these, this is just the news that's going on. And um, I, I did get another email from someone. Um, said, Pastor Mike, I'm a young black woman who goes to college. I'm a King James Bible Christian. My concerns is while most wild Christian people are so much against the young black kid that was shot, I'm not saying all white people are bigots. I'm just in shock how young black men can still get killed and the killer get away with it uh, uh, with the love of a lot of whites. And this is, uh, this is from a young lady who identifies herself as a young black woman going to college. She believes the King James Bible. Now, let me, um, let me, put, let me start putting everything as we do here on the Pastor Mike Online and Watchman Broadcast and Bethel Church and everything else, let me start putting some things in biblical perspective. Biblical perspective. Um, people are asking me what I think about the George Zimmerman case. What do I think about the Trayvon Martin shooting? What do I think about the verdict? And, and I'll be honest with you, there's probably some people just asking me just to set me up, like uh, Brent.Evans53 at Yahoo.com, okay? Uh, he, is, he is just provoking is all he's doing. That's, that's what he's doing. Uh, that would be Brent.Evans53 at Yahoo.com. He's just, he's just trying to provoke me. Now... I have I have addressed my personal views before. Um, I have had I have had to deal with this issue in my life. Um, I was born in the South, in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Uh, but I have lived in Missouri most of my life. In fact, since probably about three or four years old. Uh, so I am a native Missourian with Midwestern values. Missouri tends to be neither north nor south. It is just here is what it is. Um, my daughter, Alicia, fell in love with a young man from Nairobi, Kenya. I would be, I would be, be misleading you if I said, oh, that's, I, I, oh, I've always wanted that. For, I would be misleading that. I would, I would be telling everybody a lie if I said that instantaneously this I thought it was the greatest thing in the world after we got to know him after God brought some things about God made me love this young man and my wife too and we do we love him dearly I consider him my friend my son-in-law um, it was it was through him that God has led us to minister in Kenya, and now we are broadcasting a 24-hour FM radio station in western Kenya, sort of central Africa. You want to accuse me of being a racist? You're going to have to do. You're going to have to dig up evidence. Is what you're going to have to do. My oldest daughter uh, married a young man from Pine Bluff, uh, uh, Poplar Bluff, Missouri. That's down in the boot heel. The reason why we call it that, if you ever look at the map of Missouri, we have a heel of a boot in the southeastern part of Missouri. He is as redneck as they come. He can skin a rabbit better than I can. He rabbit hunts, fishes, deer hunts. He can handle a gun and a knife better than I can. 
He is 100% country boy, and he's black. I don't see him as being some foreign threat to my family. He's my son-in-law. We are friends. We hunt together. We do things together. I love him dearly. My daughters, they have given me two grandchildren, three so far. Adeline, who is Antonio and Lindsay's daughter, is in heaven right now. And I miss her every day I miss that girl. And now Lindsay's going to have another one. We, I, we accept people into this church. I don't, I don't care who they are, what color they are. It doesn't matter to me. So if you want to accuse me of being a racist, you're going to have to dig up better evidence than just saying, ah, you're racist. You're going to have to do better than that. Now, I'm also, now I'm going to say this to those of you who are both black, white, Hispanic, German, Chinese, it doesn't matter. I'm going to, what I'm going to say, I'm going to say to everybody. I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to read scripture to you. And if you don't like what the Bible says, you're just going to have to not like God because the Bible is the Word of God. In Paul's instructions to the Thessalonian church, right after, now mind you, right after Paul is teaching us that great doctrine on the translation of the church, being caught up together with him in the clouds, he then gives instructions to God's people on how they are to maintain their character. And this is what Paul said. This is, and this is what should be the character of the church. And I'm saying this because it does seem like white Christians, and I'm talking to all y'all, King James Bible believers, it seems that white Christians are assuming that George Zimmerman is not guilty and that Trayvon Martin, even though he actually didn't have a weapon in his hand, was wrong or a thug of some kind. And I know there's some mitigating circumstances that, that feed into that. And there are also blacks who are, and, and King James Bible believers, who are very worked up over the fact that uh, a young black man got shot and killed by who they perceive as a white man. Here's the problem with everybody dividing off now and saying, well, I think George is right, I think Trayvon, I think this and I think that. Here's the problem with you doing that. You weren't there. You weren't there. You were, you were not in that little neighborhood, that apartment complex, or wherever it was. You weren't there. You didn't see it happen. You didn't know the people that it happened to. You also were not part of the jury who sat and heard, what, two and a half some odd weeks of, of testimony? You didn't, you weren't the jury. You weren't the prosecutor. You weren't his defense attorney. The fact is, you were not there. You didn't hear everything. But what you've done, you have already made a judgment about who was right and who was wrong. Now, since we don't know all the facts, and, and I will say, there is a definite spirit in this country that is trying to destroy and provoke people in this country. And I'm going to deal with that here in a little bit. Uh, NBC is being sued by George Zimmerman's um, lawyers for defamation of character because I think, I think it's NBC. They took the 911 call, and if you remember, I dealt with this. They took the 911 call and aired it after they cut out pieces of it. They aired George Zimmerman on the 911 call saying, he looks suspicious, he looks black. And that's what they, that they tried to paint immediately George Zimmerman as some racist profiler. Maybe he was, but that's not what he said. That's not everything that he said. The true content of the 911 call 
was the uh, 911 operator was asking him, George Zimmerman, to identify the person because he was making a he was making a 911 call. I need the police out here to check this guy out. And they asked him, "Is he white? Is he black? Is he s Hispanic?" To which Zimmerman replied, "I think he's black." And so in NBC is trying to provoke people to think the wrong thing about this 911 call. They tried to make it look like Zimmerman was saying, we got a black guy in your neighborhood. I, I think he's up to something. That's what they tried to portray him as. But according to the 911 tape, that's not what happened. And Zimmerman's lawyers are suing NBC, and they're probably going to win because they have a case. Now, does that mean that I think George Zimmerman was 100% innocent in this situation. I have no clue whether George Zimmerman did anything wrong or not. I don't have a clue on what happened. Does that mean that I believe that Trayvon Martin was a punk thug, hoodie-wearing black youth, and we all know that they all kill white people. Do I believe that? No. Do I know who Trayvon Martin was? No. So here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying to all my white brethren. We have absolutely no right to judge Trayvon Martin because we didn't know him. We didn't know him. We didn't know what he was doing. We didn't know, we don't know, we don't know anything about him other than what we've let other people tell us, and I don't trust it. I don't trust you. You, who are the first ones to jump up and say, don't trust the media. All that you know about Trayvon Martin came from where? The media. And you trusted it. And I'm also going to say, to all my black brothers and sisters, I love you dearly. Not anything I hate about you. You don't have to automatically assume that George Zimmerman did something wrong. Now, he may have. I don't know. But see, here's what we're doing. We're doing this on Facebook, and we're doing it face-to-face, -face, and now we're doing it in cities across America. Now we're beating one another up, either verbally or physically because we've made a judgment on something that we don't have any knowledge of. And we, to be honest with you, it wasn't our place. They didn't ask us to be on the jury. They didn't ask us to sit in the courtroom and, and with a gavel in our hand and judge this thing. Here's Paul's commandments to the church on their behavior. He said, now we exhort, this First Thessalonians 5.14, we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. That means you warn those that don't follow the rules. We have a, we have a, uh, a group called Watchman Community. And it's a, it's a sort of a private group, although it's not some secret society. But it's sort of like a...